This particular Torah is, is uh, really quite rare. It's uh, from the uh, mid-1700s. Uh, it's actually, this is from Germany. So the irony of bringing this Torah to his grave site is, is obvious. Um, most people have, have never seen a Torah this small. Um, it was made small so that it could be carried uh, by people to the uh, when they're traveling uh, to the market let's say that used to be on uh, on a Mondays and Thursdays or when when they're traveling most tours are uh, larger letters and, and very heavy uh, so bringing this to the cemetery I thought both the the irony of being uh, German and um, and that we could transport it was uh, was valuable. Uh, this is called a yad, which is a pointer uh, for as we're as we're reading the Torah. Uh, now, this other piece that you have, this is a, a Torah cover. Now you can see the difference in size. This is for uh, uh, what would be in a normal uh, synagogue, uh, and this is the cover uh, over the scroll. I bought this uh, from a traveler. Um, he was uh, li living in eastern Canada and would travel to Europe and, and Israel, and he found uh, antiques. This one, he told me, I bought this about 30 years ago. This one was from Prague. Now, Rudy was born in, um, he's Slovak, uh, about um, about a three or four hour drive from Prague, which when he was born, it was the, obviously Prague was the capital of Czechoslovakia. Uh, so this was from Rudy's homeland, uh, near where he was born. This um, was recovered from a museum that the Nazis uh, had planned to create in Prague. It was called the Museum of a Disappeared People. Their plan was after they had eradicated all the Jewish people, they would have a museum of look what we did. Um, and the date on this, this, these are the he four Hebrew letters that indicate the date. This is about 1854. So I, I thought it was appropriate to, uh, to bring this beautiful embroidered velvet um, uh, Czechoslovakian cover uh, and will lay it uh, on his grave. Excellent. I, I also wanted to show you two other items. One is a, this will be familiar to to many people, the, this is called the, the Judenstern, the Jewish star that the Nazis made the Jewish people um, sew onto their clothing. And it feels very strange that to is put the it on. Genuine a genuine article. This is, correct. yes. And I, I bought this also from the same antique dealer who had this, and so he got this in Eastern Europe also. Uh, it was done in the different uh, languages where the people lived, Yudha, uh, so that would be in, in the German, and um, this would pr most probably, probably be the star th in the language that Rudy would have worn as he and millions of others were arrested and then incarcerated in Auschwitz. Um, and. The prayer book that I'm going to recite the blessings from is one that I prayed from for many years um, and also uh, during my travels, uh, whether it was in uh, Jerusalem or uh, New York or Moscow or Israel, di different places. And I have written in here one of the places that I traveled with it was Prague. So um, this was also used. Um, in the capital of where Rudy was born and traveled also through the Slovakian countryside. I thought it appropriate to also bring this in his memory. Absolutely. So yeah. let's go and find his grave.